will never get tired of saying this, but productivity, there's an app for that. Hi everybody, my name is Micah Gonzalez, that is M-I-C-A, Gonzalez with a Z. And I do counterproductive things like trying all kinds of different productivity apps out there so that you don't have to. I want to keep my reviews as informational as possible so that you can make the best decision about whether or not an app is right for you so that you don't waste any time and instead can just focus on getting things done. Also, for more videos about productivity, goal setting, and creativity, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another video. Okay, so I'm putting a spotlight today on a brand new productivity app called Slash. And when I say brand new, I mean it's, it's pretty new because there aren't really a lot of reviews out there that I could find. So, new productivity app, not a lot of reviews. I thought, why not? So in this video, I wanted to talk about my experience after using Slash for about a few weeks now, what I love about it, what I maybe don't, and generally who I would recommend this app for and what I hope is coming to its future. Let's get into it. Now, it wouldn't be fair for me to jump into a review about an app without first mentioning its promised features and benefits. Slash calls itself the first Do app, and I'd be lying if I said that I did not like the sound of that and it calls itself that for a reason. You're meant to get things done, you're meant to take action, and well, slash things off your to-do list. So does Slash actually deliver uh, for the most part? I gotta say, yes it does. Right before I get into the details, let me first tell you about how Slash works. So when you start the app, you're first asked to make a list of all the things that you might wanna get done for this week, and then you can pick out from that list the tasks that you wanna focus on for the day. So everything else is out of sight, out of mind, so you just need to focus on actually ticking off these tasks that you pick by the end of the day. So by tomorrow, you just do the same thing. Pick out the tasks that you want done, and then get working. It seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and that's probably one of the reasons that it works so well. But one of the best things that I appreciate from Slash is that after you've picked out your tasks for the day, you can hit the big start slashing button and you're taking into the um, closest thing that I consider as a deep focus work session. A timer will start on your screen with a task that you're supposed to be working on in big bold letters, so it's pretty hard to miss. And okay, I have to mention this combination of to-do list, priority planner, time tracker, it's ridiculously simple, yet I can't seem to think of an app that does all of this. So yeah, kudos to Slash. You see, I've tried just about every to-do list app on the market. I've, uh, I'm a bona fide fan of Timery, aka Toggle, and I still hold a soft spot for the Pomodoro technique as a way to train our minds to be more focused. But dang it, I'd be lying if I said I wish I had thought of this app idea myself. To be fair, I think there might be some to-do list apps out there that let you set Pomodoros or even countdown timers because, you know, even my personal habit tracking app does have that feature. But the fact that this is such an integral part of the Slash experience is really what I think makes it work so well. So yes, time tracking isn't new. There are a ton of apps that let you do that. But from my experience with other time tracking apps, you don't really create a list of tasks first, and then you definitely do not get to prioritize this list every day. And come on, doing a weekly brain dump of tasks, prioritizing them into a daily to-do list, being able to see actual data about your working time with analytics, Slash is speaking my language, yo. Slash is simple right off the bat, and I think that's what I like the most about it. I don't believe in having all of these complex productivity apps and systems where we spend most of our time trying to figure out how the app actually works or how to actually make the dang thing make us productive. So honestly, kudos to, to Slash. I, I know I've said that before, but I'm gonna say it again. And right out of the package, when you open up Slash, you can just get things done, check things off your to-do list, and I, Honestly, couldn't ask for anything more out of any productivity app out there. And all this doesn't even include the other cool or quirky features of the app that I haven't mentioned. Something worth noting, it has a built-in Pomodoro timer if that's how you prefer to tackle your task. There is a Eisenhower matrix tool that, if you've never heard of it before, helps you prioritize your tasks based on how urgent and important they are. I did test this feature out and it's pretty easy to use. It'll flash your to-dos one by one and you just have to select which priority they belong to, especially according to the Eisenhower matrix. Now you just have to make sure that you've actually selected your tasks for the day though, because otherwise nothing is going to happen. There are a ton of keyboard shortcuts and who honestly doesn't appreciate a keyboard shortcut? Also, you can set up recurring tasks, which is a ridiculously simple feature that even my current favorite productivity app Notion doesn't let you do. 
Okay, but this review wouldn't be very honest if I didn't mention some drawbacks that I noticed after being hands-on with the app for maybe about a few weeks now. But real quick, if you are getting any value out of this review, if you're enjoying this, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't yet. So let's talk about some issues that I noticed with Slash. The first of them being, uh, there are some bugs, you guys. The biggest one that I have found is that when I try to click on the buttons on the little time tracker bar, it usually takes a few clicks to actually register. Now, this is pretty inconsistent. Some days it works fine. Other days I'm clicking like three or four times before anything happens. And it's not a deal breaker, but I can see how this might get annoying to some people, especially if it happens every single time for every single task. So there are bugs like this here and there that I have noticed. I can't really remember every single instance, but the time tracker not being the most you know, responsive is the top of mind since this is such a key feature of the app. Another issue is one that I haven't personally noticed, uh, but these have already been, you know, reported to me by at least two other people who tested the app with me. Now, the difference between them and me is that they are both on Windows and they did notice some serious bugs while using Slash. One of them told me that the app was stuck on this black screen and it didn't even get to do anything. Another person told me that their time tracker bar thing started growing incrementally after trying to move it down to the corner of their screen. So there is that. Now I haven't personally encountered too many bugs like that, but it is worth mentioning in case you run into some yourself. Okay, and probably my biggest concern more than the bugs is that I'm not currently sure how Slash fits into my personal productivity suite especially because it doesn't yet integrate with my project management app of choice, which you guys might know is Notion. And as it stands, if you did see my Notion tour, you'll know that my projects and my tasks, they're all plotted on Notion. And I already use Notion as my to-do list planner for the day. So right now, if I did want to use Slash, I would have to do a very redundant thing, which was to manually copy my tasks from my Notion planner and to my Slash to-do list. So it's not terrible, but it's redundant. The silver lining is I don't seem to be the only one who wants a Notion integration with this app. So fingers crossed that this is something that we see very soon, especially since Notion is coming out with an API. So my final thoughts about Slash. I can easily see this replacing a few of the productivity apps that I currently use, including my favorite focus apps even. But because it's not a project management app, it doesn't have those features, I don't think it'd go as far as replacing the solid spot that Notion has in my life. And like I said before, I would welcome an integration. I'm not opposed to using both apps at once. I just would really like for them to talk to each other and integrate. I would recommend Slash for just about anyone who might be struggling to keep on top of their to-do list. Maybe you're constantly fighting a long list of tasks that you want to do, but you're overwhelmed by all the choices about what to do next. Slash can definitely help with, well, not only getting things done, but even prioritizing the many things in your life without overcomplicating things. Maybe you don't use project management apps. Maybe these things are way too complex for you. Then Slash is perfect. It's just helping you get things off of your to-do list. Then that's definitely the best use case that I can see for this app for anyone out there who is wondering if this app's for them. And all in all, it's not perfect, but it is promising. So I'll be keeping my eye out on future updates from the Slash team moving forward because I am very excited to see the future of this app and all the apps that it will you know, one day integrate with. Until then, are there any other productivity apps that I should review? Be sure to let me know in a comment. And as always, thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, you know, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you for being here and I'll see you in my next video very soon. Bye!